Hi, Dr. Con. Uh, Hayden Brown here from Dirt Bike Tips and Picks. How are you doing today? Great, Hayden. Thanks for having me on. No, thanks. Thanks for joining us uh, across uh, the other side of the world. There, I'm calling from New Zealand. You're over in the states. Uh, so the reason I wanted to get in touch with you is uh, I run DirtBikeTipsandPicks.com, as you know, and I have a lot of visitors through my site that range from just learning to ride to weekend warriors and all the way through to advanced and competitive motocross and enduro races and the one area that I see just about 95% of riders including myself struggle in yet is so often overlooked is the mental component the the mind game uh, you've been you've become known as the expert in mental training and coaching for peak performance sports and have worked with many recognized um, sports figures, pros, teams, and actually a number of national motocross champs. So I was hoping you could share some tips and advice for my fellow riders on dirt bike tips and picks uh, to help them gain, gain the, uh, the mental edge when competing. Yeah, be happy to. Great. Uh, well, firstly, for the listeners who haven't heard of you before, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the type of people you've coached? Sure. Um, I started peak performance sports back in about 1995, and um, uh, I came up through uh, physical education and kinesiology. I got a PhD uh, in 91. I earned a PhD in, in uh, sports psychology with an emphasis on uh, motor learning and, and counseling. Um, and since 95, uh, really before 95, I've been working with athletes, uh, all levels, all ages, um, all sports. I got heavily involved in the motocross in the mid nineties when, uh, Matt Bonney, who, um, at that time, I think he was 13, 14, um, uh, was racing at the national level and he was struggling a little bit. Um, to um, get on the podium and, and win national championships. So I, I spent quite a long time working with Matt, and um, Matt's dad, had uh, Dan Bonney, had sent me a lot of other racers to work with because he saw uh, some changes that I worked with uh, that really helped Matt, you know, win. And so, um, so, so really, but today my business is, it's, it's all athletes. I work with auto racers motocross racers, golfers, tennis players, baseball players here. Um, and the nice, nice thing about technology today is I can work with anyone in the world, just like you and I are talking mm. from across the world. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? I guess when it comes to highly competitive sports like, like motocross and enduro racing, uh, why is the mental component so important? Well, let me jump in and first say that, um, you know, if a racer's lap times or practice times are much better in practice than, say, in a race, for example, uh, that's a prime example of maybe something's getting in the way, provided that the track doesn't change. Let's just say that the track is consistent from, say, practice to race time. Um, and if your, your race time laps are way below what you're capable of, that's a, the number one sign that the mental component, what we call the mental training or mental coaching component, uh, may help you. Mm. Why? Because what I find, Hayden, is when people go from a practice situation and they, and they go into competition, a lot of stuff can change. They try to be too perfect, for example. They try too hard, and that leads to arm pump. Uh, mm -hmm. We can talk uh, about my philosophy of arm pump. They have fear of failure. In other words, they worry about disappointing others. They worry about disappointing a teammate, a coach, uh, maybe a parent, for example. Uh, fear of embarrassment. Um, they lack confidence when they go into the race. They have a lot of doubts. So there's lots of things that can change for racers when they go from a practice situation or even a qualifying situation into a competitive race and thus that causes them to underperform in the race.
But their typical response for most of the racers that I've encountered, their typical response is, well, I just need to go train more, I need to train harder, or I need to change up my coach. <laughs> and they tend to not look very closely at the, at the mental game because maybe they're just not aware of uh, the fact that they might be trying too hard or trying to be too perfect on the track. Hmm. Yeah, I can uh, I can relate to many of those things that you've just said, and I'm, I'm sure um, I'm sure many guys can if they actually stop and think about it. Uh, in regards to the uh, the arm pump that you're talking about, because uh, obviously that's a that's a huge issue with many riders, and I I mean I've looked right into this myself and tried many different things, and and certain things do work, um, uh, and and um, because it is such a problem. Um, what are your thoughts on that? My approach is, is um, I mean, it's pretty specific to the problem in that, uh, to me, arm pump is really more about fear and over control. Let me talk a little bit about what I mean by fear and over control. So often uh, when someone gets on the start line, they tend to want to crank it up a little bit. They tend to want to try really hard. And often when you're working against yourself, it's like a swimmer, it's like other athletes in uh, racing sports, they're working against themselves and they tire out, you know, three or four times faster than they would if they were in, I don't want to say a relaxed state, but in what I call a free state. In other words, they're just flowing around the track and, and, and letting it happen. So to me, arm pump happens when racers go out there and they try too hard. But it's not just about the trying hard, Hayden. It's also related to why is the athlete trying so hard? Um, is there some fear? Or th is there some tension? So it leads to over-controlling the bike, over-riding the bike, over-steering. I mean, there's lots of terms that we can talk about it. But basically, the racer is not trusting him or herself on the bike. And that leads to that feeling of, of arm pump because um, they're working against themselves. They're over controlling everything um, out of whatever it's out of fear, doubt, fear of failure. I mean, so there's many things that, that underlie it there, but that's the key is to get racers to really understand what is it that they're doing that's leading to arm pump. So if you don't get arm pump in practice, you go out and you put in 20 laps in practice, and you don't get arm pump at the end of the 20 laps, but then you go to a, to a 10 lap moto um, and you get arm pump, why? Mm. It's, it's not about fitness. You already proved to yourself <laughs> in mm. practice you can do a 20 lap moto. It's because they're a lot freer in practice, but they're trying too hard and overdoing everything in a race. Mm. Yeah. Do you know that actually reminds me of something? They're talking about mindset, and, and and they said something along the lines of "there's no power in a in a panic." Um, is talking about when you put yourself into the state of stress or panic, where you're not functioning properly in a relaxed state. Um, there's no strength, there's no power in it, and it's and it's, it becomes very difficult to do well in that situation, no matter what you're in. Um, exactly. Yeah. Mm, um, now, I know we haven't got long here, but. Um, can you share one or two tips for us riders to to help us overcome the fear and anxiety we feel when lining up at the beginning of a race? Because um, <laughs> it's nerve-wracking, you know? Well, it is, and, and for many different reasons. And that's what you have to hone in on, Hayden, is why is it nerve-wracking for you specifically? Um, but often what I find is the fear and the nerve-wracking, it's about outcome meaning racers tend to focus too much on outcome. They tend to place themselves on the start line. In other words, I'm good for a top 10, I'm good for a top five, I'm good for a podium. So they tend to have expectations about where they should finish, and they also feel expectations from others about where they think they should finish, right? So that creates some of the pressure in and of itself is having these expectations about the outcome. Um, so you can kind of know where I'm going here. Mm -hmm. And part of it is, is you have to understand, well, am I, am I afraid to embarrass myself? Am I afraid to fall? Am I afraid to disappoint others? So that's a big part of the question and answer that I go through with my students. And in terms of the tips, you really have to learn how to 
race one turn at a time. I call it one section at a time, one turn at a time. And so when you're on the start line, it's all about the start and getting to that first turn. Um, um, yeah, obviously as quick as you can and, and out front, but not everybody's going to be out front, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, really it's about chunking it and taking it one section at a time. Let's deal with the, the race within the race is the start. And then let's deal with the next turn or the next section and only focus on those and try to get away so much from the, the outcome thinking. If I don't get on the podium, is the parent going to be disappointed? If I don't get on the uh, podium, am I going to disappoint myself? Um, if I, you know, if I have a good finish, are others going to have higher expectations of me? You know, mm -hmm. so there's a different angle uh, of it there. So certainly you got to find out what's the anxiety, what's the performance anxiety all about. Uh, but at the same time, um, you got to learn to be confident in your abilities, know that you've trained hard, focus only on the process or execution one section at a time. And the big thing about, you know, going back to the arm pump is you got to let it happen. You got to let it flow instead of trying so hard. And then you're working against yourself and you're tired after four laps. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of, um, there's lots of components when it comes to the having a good mental game for racing, uh, but those are some big components, obviously, is the composure, the focus, the confidence, and trust in your ability to um, use your skills you've trained yourself to do in practice. It sounds like to me that you know everyone is, is different, and it's not necessarily the same things that's making everyone feel that anxiety or, or being stressed on the start line. It, it, um... So it sounds like there's a, there's a few questions that uh, one might need to ask themselves on an individual basis to find out what, what the problems are. Yeah, and it's not always about anxiety, though. Hey? I mean, it's not always about tension and anxiety. It could be, you know, you have a perfectionist. We work with a lot of perfectionists mm -hmm. that has good and bad qualities. They, they tend to, you know, uh, tighten up for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? They, they try so hard. They try to avoid mistakes. They try to avoid hitting those holes in the corners, uh, they try to avoid falling, you know, so it's not just the mental training isn't just about helping athletes that are anxious or fearful on the line. It's also about dealing with perfectionism. It's also about dealing with lack of confidence, lack of composure, getting frustrated easily, fear of falling and making mistakes. So, so, so there's a, a lot, I just want to say, for your listeners, there's a lot more to the mental training component than dealing with that performance anxiety. Mm, yeah. So if somebody listening to this is struggling in this area, um, you know, and, and they've, got, they've got problems with, uh, with any of the things that you've just sort of mentioned, or they know they could be, um, they could ride better, faster, and enjoy racing more if they could improve their mind game and mental toughness, um, what are your best tools and training programs available for them? The best option that we have is the personal mental training where we coach athletes and racers through Skype or um, go to meetings, another form that I use, um, really from anywhere in the world, like I, like I suggested early on. If you're more self-motivated and you want to um, check out some of our programs, we have the Confident Athlete Series, which is a great starter series. And we also have um, the Arm Pump Solve program. If you're really struggling with the arm pump, and I give you all my strategies and tips for dealing with arm pump. So it's really personal coaching or CD programs is our best solutions. Okay, sounds sounds awesome. Um, what I'll do is I'll include a link so on my website just below this um, this interview, uh, uh, so my guys can get hold of your uh, confident athlete series. Um, once again, Dr. Con, uh, thank you so much for your time. 
I, I know you're a busy man, and uh, but on behalf of all my fellow riders from dirtbiketipsandpicks.com, uh, we really appreciate you sharing some of your knowledge with us today, and uh, I'm sure my guys would have got a lot out of it, as, as I have. So um, thanks very much. Hey, thanks for the great questions, Hayden.